All right. Howdy, 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 everyone out there. I have not been here very often lately. Me and Bob has been taking a break. Summer is a good time to get outside and enjoy nature. I think that's what Bob would want us to do, and that's what I've been doing. We've been gardening and swimming and, and uh, you know, of course, mowing in the yard and, and all those little things. And, and just enjoying things. Listening to the birds. Watching the birds fly. Talking to the bees. All that good stuff. So, I thought I'd sit down here and paint a little painting. It's one that is inspired by Nick Hankins. But I've changed it quite a bit. Uh, it's a little bit different layout. And um, we're going to see what we can do. So I've got my colors out over here. Not going to take a lot of time talking about those. We're just going to get right to it. So I am going to actually pick up a new Bob Ross two, uh, one inch brush here and try it out. This is a new one. It just came in the mail for me. So. We'll try it out and see how it works here. I've got some of my older ones laying here too. But I am going to pick up some Indian yellow. Oh, wait. Why did I make a mistake? I'm actually going to pick up some crimson first. Sorry. That's a lizard crimson. Just a little bit. Just enough on the brush here to kind of tint the canvas a little bit. If you're always, if you're ever worried about having too much, you can always just wipe it off. Sometimes I'll I'll do that. So, this one's got a little bit of crimson here in the middle somewhere. And I haven't painted, I've painted this one before. I've not painted it on a 12 by 24 inch canvas like this, kind of stretched out. So we're gonna see what it looks like. It may not look as good as I want it to, but guess what? I'll have fun painting it and then we'll post this video here if it turns out okay. Just all the way over, just a little. A little crimson there. You, know, you can go really bright. You can go really light. It doesn't really matter. Kind of a lot of this gets ate up here by other colors. So just need a little glow of crimson here. I think Mom would always say, "Don't set the sky on fire." And we don't want to do that. The sky's on fire enough as it is. So try to help nature out here a bit. So I'm a little bit above halfway, it looks like, maybe. I don't use rulers or anything, so it's hard to actually know what I got. Shouldn't need rulers and worry about measurements in, in art, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Feel free to make it your own. All right, so I had, I had to pull a sneaky there and use two brushes here because I put some Indian yellow on that new Bob Ross brush, and that's the next color that we'll use. We'll grab a little Indian yellow. I don't know, you're like, well the yellow should have been first, right? No, not on this one. We're going to put this right in here, kind of fire it in here on on the crimson, let them kind of overlap. I'm going to save some room there at the top for something else. I haven't decided yet. I usually do like a uh, say a little green, and that's probably what I'll do tonight too. This brush works pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And let's just see how much yellow we want. We want to leave a little line. I know it's kind of looking odd. We're gonna we're gonna kind of bring these together a little bit and, and blend them here in a minute and then we'll start looking a little nicer. You never want to be able to see where one color starts or one color stops and then one the next color starts. It's kind of just it's one of the things Bob always preached about and it really is kind of one of those things on painting that you'll look at it and say, I don't quite like that. That might be one of those things that you're looking at. Maybe you didn't blend enough. It's usually in a the sky, these colors will blend together and you don't really see that. And that's not always the case. It's not always the case. Well, we'll stop there. I'll grab this this crimson brush here I was using, since I've got two of them going now. Let's wipe it out on a paper towel a little bit here. Didn't even tear the paper towel out. That's getting lazy, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna pick up some phthalo green, just a little bit. And by the way, I'll mention one thing here. 
mention one thing here a squeaky chair starts chiming in that's a new tube of thalo green actually i have not had a tube of thalo green in probably three years because i don't use it a lot but this is the new paint uh, by golden the bob ross paint much nicer uh, i've got a tube of white i'm using here and this stuff works well i mean uh kudos to uh nick hankins for getting this right because i think he played around with it and, and got it to this is excellent i've used this on a painting the white it's the first time i've used thalo green so we'll see what it looks like but it, it there's no oil coming out of these tubes that's been a problem before and we'll see what we can do here. We're going to take a little thalo green now. And actually, I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to get a little less. A little too bright. There we go. Yeah, and it looks like thalo green to me, doesn't it? I'm like, yeah, but why are you putting it up there? Now, here's the thing. Sometimes, Bob would talk about skies. You didn't want your sky to kind of turn green. Well... If you ever look at the sky sometimes, especially in per certain parts of the world, it'll actually look a little greenish, so it's okay. You can actually, if you don't like the green, sometimes I'll take a smidge of Prussian blue and add that into my phthalo green here. Kind of mix them together. I'll change it up a little bit. But that pale green looks right. It looks right. Again, it. it's not really the paint colors were having a problem being right. It was that they were too dang oily. So that's a good thing here. There we go. That's a little nicer with the thalo blue. Sorry, Prussian blue in there. Yeah. I'll spend all that. Just putting in some sky color here. But guess what? I don't care. I'm back to painting. Now I've been painting a little bit, but not much. Again, not much at all. It's just hard in the summer to really sit down here and make little videos and things. I think just a touch of pure Prussian blue and darken up these corners a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit. And I'm using, I've got two new brushes. This is a this is one from the 1990s that I got. Really nice brush. So it's first use here too. So we'll see what happens with all these. And we'll kind of leave it right there. And we'll kind of just step back and look at it and say that looks kind of odd, right? So what we're going to do is grab a two-minute brush, which I'm going to have to grab. Oh, we've got one right here. You want to put the liquid white on, just wipe it off a little bit. And this doesn't need much blending here. This, this yellow and crimson together. These two look like they're pretty close to being done. What I want to do here is maybe, maybe just blend a little bit between the yellow and the green. The blue-green, we'll call it. We'll some aqua. And we'll just kind of blend those together. Again, I'm not too worried about getting green sky because I kind of put green in the sky, right? Well, not kind of, I did. And we're going to throw some clouds in here too, so it's going to look pretty cool. Never be scared to try some different colors. That's the worst thing you can be is scared. Just, just throw them on here. What you're going to do, um, what's going to happen if it messes something up? You just start over. You're really worried about it, and you're worried about wasting a canvas or something. Get one of those cheap canvases and try it out. I want a little bit darker color up here. I'm just going to throw in some little cloudy shapes already. Go in here. These lights behind me, I can't really see. And then I step back and look, and I'm like, that doesn't look right. Let's see what that looks like. That's getting a little better. Getting a little closer to what I wanted. You want to set those kind of in, into the sky. Maybe just kind of blend them like this. Never be scared to just try different things with the brush different movements with it. Just set that down. We're gonna, again, we're gonna put some cloudy shapes up here anyway, so it doesn't really matter, does it? All right. I think, step back a minute and look. Yeah, that'll work for what I wanted to do. A nice cheery sky. 
Sometimes this can be pastel -y. Sometimes it can be uh, bright and vibrant. This one's a little, a little bright, brighter than normal for this painting. I'll, I'll grab the painting and show you what I'm working off of here in a second. So you can see where I started. And this is a little different, but I like it. I like it. I'm going to grab a filbert. If you got a filbert laying around, grab that if you want to paint, paint along here. And I'm going to have to mix just a little bit of a color together. And I'll tell you when I'm mixing, I'm not going to worry about showing you. Not because I don't want to. Because I'm lazy. I would if I wasn't so lazy. Alright, so I'm going to take just a touch of mountain mix I have out. Okay, there's mountain mix. And I'm going to grab a little touch of the new white. And maybe a speck of Prussian blue. Just a little bit. I'm going to mix those down to a light color. Maybe a little bit more white in there. This is just going to be some like shadowy clouds, so this should work fine. Yeah, that should work fine. Alright, so it doesn't look right, we'll take it back off the canvas and start over, right? Okay. <clears throat> Now, what I'm doing here, let me grab a paper towel. I don't look crazy wiping on paper towel roll. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of this back off. I've loaded it up. It's, you can see the color there. And I'm just going to use this filter to throw in some dark shapes. And it's really loose dark shapes. Kind of like it's just, you almost can scrub them in. Very loose. Kind of swooping in here to kind of like that. Don't need to reload paint unless you're just getting super low. Uh, and then I want to throw a little bit up here. Go ahead and put these in. Just a few. I might need to put a little paint up here. Just some wispy stuff up there. Kind of stretching that out. I am reloading just a little bit of paint. And really. The goal here is to darken these corners a little bit. But I don't want the clouds to get too out of control. They're just some little shadowy clouds. You could sit here and, and, and fiddle with them all day, but there's really no point. I'm just using little circles and kind of moving the paint around, really. And we'll blend them a little bit. Put the little tops on. Stretch them out a little more if you want. You can just drag the brush and let it kind of pull little tails off your clouds. Did you know that tails have clouds? Did I say tails have clouds? Did you know that clouds have tails? How about that? Okay, now I can't remember how to uh, actually try to say what I'm saying here. That's kind of what I'm going for. Kind of. Now I want a couple of darker ones. A couple of darker ones right here, maybe. And we're just going to, again, just little circles. This filbert's really good for clouds, by the way. You could do the same thing with the fan brushes. Don't think that you have to use the brushes I'm using here. Kind of a similar shape there, but a little darker. Just bring it right there. There we go. And then maybe just pull off the tails there. Again, remember tails have clouds as I just said a minute ago. And clouds have tails. Kind of wisping in the air there. Maybe there's a maybe there's another one right here. A lot of this is just about color placement for these types of clouds because we're not going to blend these to death. I'm going to stand up so I can see what I'm doing here. Yeah. And I just want some, literally, just take your brush and just run some little stuff like this everywhere. And maybe not everywhere, but something like that. 
little far away little things that we might pick up in our in our field of vision here. Actually, watch this. I'm gonna just turn that whole corner into nothing but a cloudy shape there. Where is where does that cloud originate? Who cares? As long as we like it. Yeah, I like that much better. Same thing over here, maybe. Maybe just bring bring those clouds out like that. Yeah, there we go. Wow. There's good depth in there. I don't know if it looks good. But it's something. I'm going to take the brush with the yellow on it. I think that'll work okay. And I'm just going to set these clouds in. I need to just pull them. Pull the bottoms like, like that. I'm just kind of blending. Almost using the whole brush there. You can turn it up and do it like this too. Just kind of churning these around. And it's actually putting a little yellow in those clouds, which is nice. Now, if you look at my brush, it's starting to turn green. So if that's bothering you, stop and get a different brush. For me, guess what? It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, I wanted a little bit of different look in the sky. And every time, I've painted this one a few times now. Painted, painted with Nick in class, maybe, Lord, back in 2016, probably. 17, 16, 17, somewhere around there. And it's quite a different painting. The sky's pretty much the same. And then I've changed it into something else here. I think he was painting off of a photograph. It was good painting. Good, good painting. There, look at that. Just, just go crazy. There. Wow. Well, there you go. Could be a seascape start, too. Doesn't have to be a, uh, a mountainy steam, but this is going to be an Alaskan stroll, is what we'll call it. If that name makes sense or not, but that's what we're going to use. Now, this is the color I was using for the clouds. Okay, it's I got mountain mix, a touch of blue, just a touch of Prussian blue, and a little bit of white also to kind of tone it down a little bit. You can see it there, it's that color. That's actually what we're going to use. Since we got it here, and I'm lazy, like I said, I may even put a little bit more white. I think that'll work. I'm just, I'm just playing with colors. And I know some folks are like, well, we can't see what you're mixing. I can't see you load the brush. I'm figuring that some things are good just to work out on your own. This is just me sitting and having fun, and I appreciate that you're watching. So watch and see what happens here. I've got a little roll of paint on my knife and see it's that little light color again we're gonna put a we're gonna put a little i should say little mountain in this guy about right here literally i don't want much more than that Looking at my, because I like this mountain I've got on this. I'll, I'm going to grab that painting. Just a second, I'll pause this when I'm recording here and grab the, the painting I made that I'm working off of. It's kind of like Bob. I've got a reference off screen here. Something about like that. It's kind of just a standardy shape. We don't have to worry about too much here. You can throw extra little peak or two in there if you need to, make it a little more pleasing for you. But I'm really going to scrape all that back off now and not put any more. Like that's not a very big mountain. You're right. I'm going to just stretch it out now. I'm going to stretch it out. Pull it to the right. Pull it to the right. Almost down into the white. You know, if I don't have anything down there yet. What in the world is it going to be? And then just kind of... But it's nice if you can sneak in here. 
and you get lucky if you kind of hold your tongue right get a little pink down there that's nice don't have to this, this brush is pretty good pretty good again it's one of the newer ones I just got them it's still a little too synthetic -y for me but it's better than what they had been that's great there we go just a little tiny 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 little mountain there in the sky I'm actually going to use the one with too much now just to kind of make sure and get that where I want it I don't want to see it I just want that to disappear down here it's up in the cloud that cloud is is hugging on that mountain look it's really low maybe a little too low we'll cover that with a the tree there we go sitting way off don't always have to have a gigantic Godzilla mountain there that work right don't you think I'll tell you all a little secret I've got tons of knives and I've gotten I take great care of my brushes but I've gotten really sucky job at taking care of my knives I've got paint right on these things so I've got to clean these off don't do this this is this is just shows that you, you don't care about your knife and this is probably the most important thing in Bob Ross style painting or this wet on wet this big palette knife take care of you take care of you have your knife spayed and neutered help control the bad knife population all right I am going to take that same color and I'm going to lighten it down a little bit I don't want pure white in fact if you can get out of the habit of using pure white in your painting you'll be better off I can't think of a single thing in nature that's pure white let's see if this let's, let's see if this is what I want just got a little bit of roll on my yeah I think that's it it's gonna be a very subdued mountain here just a hint of some some form on there some uh, substance actually I might marble my white in that color together there we go this could be uh, this could even be like Mount Hood or Mount Rainier or somewhere you never know you never know what you might get here just a little texture on that mountain sitting way back there I mean for this painting I'm not brightening it up a bit who knows there's a little bit there and it is kind of too thin we're not going to even put a shadow we're just going to kind of pull back on the paint we put and that will just kind of give it a shadow I didn't mean to put that much there but that's okay a little bit brighter here maybe there's a, a brighter spot or two Well, I hope everybody is doing well. Thought we was getting back to normal here with not worrying with viruses and stuff and then it's ramping back up. I don't like that. I imagine, not that it's any big, big to do, but I imagine I'll make more videos here as we get back into fall and, and summer kind of fades away there we go just something sitting back in there but I do want to encourage you while you can get out and enjoy nature we were all cooped up a lot of us were cooped up last year you got a local park around you go to it uh, you got a state park uh, you got a national park which I'm lucky to live near the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Go to the parks. Sit by a stream. Talk to a tree. Look at the wildflowers. Count the bees. Thank the bees. Any of those things. And I'm not trying to copy Bob. The same things like that. I actually believe it. 
I will sit and look at my bees and talk to them and tell them how good they're doing. I don't have any, I get, I like seeing my squirrels come to the bird feeders, but um, I get mad at them too. I let them eat, but I'm like, don't eat so much. So it's expensive. Another thing we got going on, it's not just painting that I'm worried about, is there's a virus going around or something, an unknown illness affecting their songbird. So watch out for that. And if you have a, uh, like we have Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, I think it is, TWRA, telling us that we might need to take our feeders down for a while because we don't want to cause any more mass spreading of that. To go on. I'm going to take care of our birds. All right, I don't know why I'm rambling so much. I'm sorry. But uh, let's see what we can do here. What do we want to do next? I think, I think I will try out. That's a new fan brush that I just got. So it's, it's not, let me show, did I bring my old one back here? I've got one that was from the 90s. You can see it's been taped together. I need some glue on it. Came apart. But looking looking pretty close. Looking pretty close. Now mine's dirty, of course. Been used a lot. So we're going to try this out. Get a little white. And we'll use a fan brush. I may switch. I may change my mind on, on you. And use something different. I'm going to use that whole brush, though. So. Little circles. Little circles here. I want this to be pushed back even more. So I'm just going to put some, like, cloudy... Look at that. Just some, some mist and fog down here. Just Maybe just diffuse that mountain. Oh! Speaking of diffusing the mountain... Nobody's here to tell me what to do. Let's tap her mountain into the into the mist here. Again, I probably over highlighted it a little bit, but that's okay. Kind of stretches out like that. Always want to tap it out a little bit this way. Just kind of lightly, just give it a little pick up there. There we go. Now we can go commence our cloud action there. Now back to your regularly scheduled broadcast here. And I'm just smushing some paint in, really. And you can even just do it like that. Right at the base here. Right around the base. As long as it shows up a little bit, we'll be in good shape. And I'm going to try to hide a little bit of that big cloud there. Got a little lower than I wanted it to. You can even reach up into the sky with that. If you've ever seen any of these big mountain ranges, you can see them from far off and they look kind of detailed. Like you can see quite a bit of detail on the top. Not where you could pick out little individual trees, but it looks sharp, if, if, if that makes sense. And then you look at the horizon and it starts looking very fuzzy and very cloudy usually. And sometimes you get out in those mountain ranges and you can't see them anywhere. Remember when we, we saw Mount Rainier, we saw the top of it one day. Sticking out of the clouds, but nothing else. Just, just like the, the main top of it. Alright, I think I can use this brush. Let's try it. If I have to, I'll go grab one. I'll wipe it off a little bit here. Let me wipe it a little better than that. I've got an old rag here. I just want to stir this up a little bit. And it, oh, see, it's got a little blue on it. It's got a little green. This is the one I put the sky in. That may be okay, though. I'm going to see what it looks like. As always, don't, don't follow my lead. Grab you a clean brush and go at it. Yeah, too much color. Let's switch brushes here. Yeah, I had another two-inch laying here that, that's getting old on me. It's a little stiff, but it'll work. Or just to, to finish setting those clouds in there, and I don't want to even see where that mountain might start. There we go. Just, and when we put everything in, that'll actually look pretty good, I think. 
All right, we're at the 30 minute mark, guys. I rambled about birds and bees, and this is not even, uh, you didn't even have to get a waiver from your parents. So, all right. I don't like something I did. So we'll change it just a touch. I switched that out to where it's flat. Let's put a little top back on it. A little misty top there. Lord, he just went into his mountain. Who cares? I kind of like the blue tint in there. Just It looks like that's sitting in clouds, which is what I want. All right. Let's commence the painting something else. What well, when I fall? I want to grab some mountain mix. I might grab a little thing, a little green. I'm going to grab a little sap green if I can find it. There's some. Mountain mix, a touch of phthalo green and a little, little more phthalo green, is, a little more sap green than phthalo green. Sorry. All right, I'm gonna mix those together. Yeah, I like that. Yes, this is nice. I think you're gonna like this. The phthalo green gives it a little different look. It's a little, little emeraldy. Changes the sap green a little bit. Now that looks just like a darker sap green. It almost looks like a hunter green or something. Play with your colors. Get your color wheel out and play with your colors. Or some of the best videos you can ever find on different platforms are people mixing paint. Andrew Titchler does it. Uh, taking paint swatches from Home Depot, Lowe's, and trying to match that color. And if you do that, you'll learn more than you could ever want to know or probably need to know about painting in this style especially. So if you can take a color and look at it and say, I need this, this, and that to get that color, then you're in good shape. And you can do it, you're in good shape, I should say. I want to add a little white to that color. Add a little white. And then I'm gonna put it up here and see if I like it. I think I do. I think I do. Maybe a touch more mountain mix. Yeah, just a little darker. I want this to be light. A little light. But not light, light, light. If that makes sense. All right, we're going to go back to our, our new brush here to get it. We're trying this stuff out. See if things are starting on the uh, upswing here for these brushes and paint. I'm going to just kind of load up both sides, pulling both sides through my fan brush. I know you can't see me, but if you've done this style or you painted along, you know these little things. You don't have to see my palette all the time. Maybe I've got somebody over here mixing the paint for me because I don't know what I'm doing. And if, you, if you found out, you, you know all my secrets. Let's see if this will work. So what I envision is some trees cutting right below this mist. And I may not like this big brush for this. This is a big fan brush because it's brand new. Let's just see if I like his color. Yeah, that'll work. That'll, yeah, that's going to work nice. So I'm just going to do some little strike down trees here. And I want to be able to save. You want to really, if you're trying to paint this one, you want to save a lot of this white down here. It will look nice at the end. Pick that brush up and just start scrunching in some stuff here. Kind of like this, and you can reload it as you need to. Probably don't need to go all the way across, but I probably will. I have other things living here. And it's just really, it's you, you hit pretty quickly, striking down, and then you smush the brush almost. I always just call them strike down trees. I don't know why. It's just an indication of a tree more than a tree. So if you can make an indication of something, then you, you're, you're doing it right. And if you need to, just kind of slow down a minute. What I always have to do, and I'll do it here in a second, is go back and look and make sure I don't have the same distance between each tree. I know that I'm keeping a lot of paint towards the bottom. I'm doing that on purpose, but I also want to make sure that 
I could take get a ruler out here and probably measure between those two and these two and make sure that there's you know not the same all the way down so try to get out of a pattern I guess is what I'm trying to say you don't want to, you don't want to do patterns you also don't want fence posts as Bob would say about these you could put these in with just about anything but again try to save some of that mist down here now you could put these in like this let me show you Go pretty quickly here just kind of hitting down and smooshing and then come back and kind of clean them up what does that mean okay, some, some of that doesn't look great back there but we'll come back there in a minute and clean them clean them clean them clean them up Also add a little dark back in there occasionally. It'll look like you've got some even further if you don't hide them all. Let me show you what I mean by that. Take a little fresh paint here, and this one's a little light. So put a little dark paint. The ones behind that one or next to it look like they're further back in the distance. And that's nice. It's nice if you like it. The ambrush is, is performing. Well, so, so far, so good. I'm not going to go all the way across here. There's just no point. This is meant to be right at the base of the mountain. Well, we're not right at the base. It needs to be a little bigger. Or a little lighter color, probably. But these are meant to be kind of at the base in here. Kind of sitting like this. I don't know if basin's right either, but if you guys, you can, you feel free, feel free to make up your own terminology as you paint. I sure as heck have a hard enough time. If everybody listened to me, you would think uh, tails have clouds. You start looking at your dog's tail, and they'd start getting worried. Why are you checking my tail out? Yeah, I'll put one right there. So I'm just going back and adding a few little nicer tops. You can always kind of change these up. Throw little extra ones in there every now and then. Maybe that one's a little, a little softer over there on the side. You can also, what if I did, grab a little bit of mountain mix added into the paint. Hmm. And I just threw a little bit of that in here. You never want to mix your paint. See that one? Put a little bit more of that in there. It's a little darker right in there. And that's nice. Not one strand of green across the canvas. I hope you can see an angle. I don't know if it's going to show up or not. This brush is almost pointed up towards the ceiling to do these. And you gotta reload paint and you gotta strike down and crunch to get that down at the bottom. We can also, another thing we'll do here in a minute, we'll kind of give you nice tops on these. I don't like that one right there. Kick it up. A little bigger one there. Sometimes they can be a little bigger. Now, what if we wanted to do this? But hold on. Let's do one thing before I do that. I can use the blue brush now, thankfully, because I'm getting low on brushes here. Nope. I'm calling in the big big boys. I'm gonna smack and it really smack and kind of crunch down again. Just at the bottom, kind of in the middle. Middle bottom, if that makes any sense. Drag a little bit of that color down. And this one really is going to make a little forest of trees if you can hear me over the banging. Sorry, they weren't used to video here in a minute. Until I get this done. You can drag some of that color up there if you want. Make it look like it's going into the mist there. Yeah. That's looking okay. Looking okay. Not great, but okay. And got a couple things I'm going to do with these. I'm going to keep 
doing that for a bit. Sorry. There we go. I'll hold it. Gonna help. Okay. There we go. A little mist down here. I want to kind of pull up on them. Just kind of pull through them. Be careful. I almost pulled too much there. You just kind of lightly pull. I'm, just, I'm almost. I'm pulling too much. So there we go. And you can take your one inch brush might do better on this one. And this brush is getting a little old on me. I'm actually just going to mist this out a little bit here. Get the brush while I've got it in my hand. I've got an idea. I'm going to push, I'm going to cut these off a little bit. I want this color, but I don't want that tall tree. I don't want that much of the canvas taken up with these. I want about that much. You know, we're not worried about measuring things here. We need to throw some of this dark, darker green, or this lighter green, I guess you should say, over there. I don't think we're getting somewhere. I think we're getting somewhere. What I've got in mind to do here, I think go back to the one inch brush here. Maybe. This is a little bit of a, a lake. A little bit of a lake. Yeah. Just pull a little bit of that down. I'm putting a little extra color in there just to make it look like those trees are in there. You can turn the brush that way and pull down too. And then you'll get a nicer look for the reflection. Pull out a little more. There's a bigger one, so I need to pull a little bit more down. And I don't want the lake going all the way across. Just kind of right in here. Something like that. Remember, we got power to move things here, so we're going to take that now. Added that color. Pull down. Pull down. And it doesn't matter. As long as you, it looks like you've got a reflection, it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't go for perfection here. We go for what we want to go for, I guess. If we're having fun, we're having fun, right? Go across that. And that might turn into a lake. It's starting to look like one. Pull that down a little bit more. Pull straight down. It's key to pull straight down. There we go. It's starting to look like something. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. I forgot I was going to try to do this quickly tonight, but that's not a big deal, is it? You can fast forward and see the end if you want to. If you're still watching, you're like, I'm tired. I'm just going to take this brush and just put a, a little hint here and there of a few of these, maybe. I may even let that one grow a little bit. Maybe having a little bit of detail on them. Just a few. Even though this brush is a new big fan brush, if you kind of drive it a little slower, you can get some fine detail out of it. Yeah, raise that one up. you hear a snoring sound, that is my golden retriever behind me snoring. She is really getting into it right now. I took our dogs to the pool today and made them all get in. River, who is in here with me right now, loves to swim. Our other two, one of them kind of likes to get in the water. Not much, um, but our big guy, Copper, is old, got arthritis. So we made him get in the pool tonight. When I say made, we're not like a, you know, like dunking his head under. We kind of pulled him into the pool and floated him around with with us, and it cooled him off. He's so hot at night. Cooled him off, and I think it was good for him. I wish he would get in and just float. Might help his. These joints. There, just a few of these have a little detail on them. Just a few. All right. All right, all right, all right. We need to take a little bit of that color, add a little mountain mix to it. Make a, maybe a little bit more. 
We'll make a dark color now. Still want it to be kind of green. We'll start laying out some land here. You know, if we got a lake here, there'd be a little big piece of land probably right there. Forgot to grab the one I was working on. Hopefully I'll do that before I end the video. You guys can see it's, this one's looking a little different. A little different layout, and that's great. No paintings look the same. It's just kind of an idea. Gives me an idea of what I did, what I liked, what I didn't like. That's all going to be land there. I'll just tap in a little dark to remind me. This is just mountain mix in the green color I was working with. More land going down to this lake here. Yeah, something like this. I'm just gonna tap it on. Just crazy, crazy here for now. Probably need a little more dark. We go. The green and that mountain mix mixed together, and it's pretty nice. We'll kind of go with that. Very, very thin. Piece of land back here that I might want to consider beefing it up just a touch. You don't need a big lake. Just a little piece of land there that we might be able to walk back into those trees here in a minute. Yeah. That's what I wanted. That is what I wanted. I was going to try to keep this to an hour. It may turn into a little bit more than that. All right, now we've got to decide what we want to work on next. Kind of regretting not taking these all the way over. Still could, I suppose. I think I should. Uh, there's a reason. I'm looking at the other painting here. I want to do a few at least. Ain't going to mess nothing up by doing it. Even if I'm just loose and free with these now, just putting some color here might be nice. Like you put a whole tree there. Looks like it, doesn't it? Don't kill all your sky, though. That's actually a pretty good evergreen right there. Happy accident. That will work. We're going to have to smack them. We're going to cover most of it anyway. Big old stretch of trees, right? I think what I want to do next, maybe let's highlight our grass a little bit. I'm going to take my dirty brush. I'm going to get just a touch of liquid white. You can see how little, little I would call a touch. I want just some um, yellow. Cad yellow. Cad yellow, maybe a touch of yellow ochre. If you're so inclined, I just want to put a faint, I want to start putting a little faint highlight on that grass back there. And the reason I grabbed the liquid white is because my cad yellow is super thick. It will not stick here. Just kind of put a little, a little bit of something back there. Still not. Making great. Okay, there might work a little better. Don't be scared to just go over top of your dark. Your grass will look nicer. I started out kind of like that. Side where little hills and little crevices may creep into the lake here. There, like that. See the little dark spots I left? Got to do that. Got to do that. Change your color too sometimes. I put a little, I stuck a little Indian yellow in there. May not show up, but if it does, that's nice. And my paint's finally coming off here. There, I like that better. I got a little odd spot right there. Don't, there. 
And I'm just touching, lightly touching. Remember, if you've got enough paint on your brush, it'll come right off. It's not super bright highlight either. Kind of dirty. This, this area back in here looks like it would be a little dark. I don't know if, if what I'm painting here is a sunrise or sunset. You can decide for yourself. You can tell me what it is in the comments there. You can tell me it's a mess, you know. You don't always have to be, you know, you don't always have to be nice. Nice is nice. But we can deal with not nice sometimes. Positive may be better than not nice. Not everything is always have to be a positive comment. Don't like something, tell me. We'll change it. Well, to some degree we might. I kind of like that being a little lighter. I know that probably doesn't make sense though. Let's take the fan brush and smush in some dirt right here in the corner. Smack it in there. Remember Bob said he put paint on with the shoe? That's about right there. We can do that with. Probably have to touch this up because I got a bunch of trees to paint. Starting to look like something though. A little ground. A little ground. We're gaining some ground here. We may not do much over here yet, but I may just put a touch back in here. I want those trees to be way back behind that grass. And honestly, if I if I'm honest with you, wasn't paying attention on one thing. When I paint this one, I like to have a little white below these trees. This size canvas is a little odd, stretched out for me. But it still looks fine. But if you try to do this one, leave, maybe raise the mountain up just a touch and leave a little space down here of white under these trees. So it almost looks like you're going into fog, even when you walk back there. It still looks nice, but... I guess it's one of those... Uh, Bob didn't like us to call them mistakes, but that's almost a mistake. We'll, we'll call it, we'll, I'm not going to say it's a happy accident. That one didn't work out that way. And I had to put very little liquid white on here, but just a, it's just a touch. Okay. Okay. Let's mix a color up now. We'll grab more Mountain Mix, add into our dark, we'll add a little Prussian Blue in there too. That's the dark green that we ain't made the background trees of. Oh, uh, I don't know what that means. But that's the paint we use for the background trees. One of these days I'll, I'll learn to talk. We got a big old gob of paint there. Put some bigger trees in here. We may not just stick with evergreens, but we're going to put a bunch of evergreens to start with. Try out this brush here and see what it what see what we can drive out of here. Oh, I know I want one right here. Yellow line. The line just helps you to kind of guide where it's going. Kick your brush over to the side, kind of drop it down a little bit, and then just barely touch. Touch with just a corner. Back and forth now. I'm going to try to keep these a little slender. You ever seen those? A lot of trees in Alaska look slender to me. Not all trees. You see what I was wondering about that? If I could get away with the thinner paint being on here, I think I can. You may want to put your grass in, grass in last. There's one darker tree. Yeah, that tree looks probably black on the camera. Let's see. 
Let me lean back and look. It does. It's actually a dark green. Very, very dark green. Maybe there's another one that's a little taller right here. Oh, noises help. Bob said they did, and I do believe they do. Wish be trees here. Leave some spaces every now and then. Do you think these look better if you keep your centers really nice and dark? You know, like I said, you can skip a spot or two every now and then, but you really get better look. In this method, where we're trying to paint over paint, if you take your time and, and really paint, you could probably do some really wonderful things here. A little more detail, not wonderful. You can do wonderful things with this method, right? A little more detail is what it means. Then we got a big one. I am going to steal a saying from my good friend Steve Ross. I fed this one some lasagna here. Steve, I have asked you a lot of things, but I don't know why I'm going to ask you why you said that. Why would you feed a tree one on you? Keeping that tree kind of airy. Anybody doing anything fancy, painting, pretty painting, send them to me. I like to see them. I've not been as active on Facebook lately. I guess you could email me or... I wish there was a way to put them in the comments. Maybe I could do a community post. I think we've got that where we can kind of do that, maybe. So if you're working on some neat stuff, show it off. I've been working on being lazy. Probably put some trunks in these. I don't know if I'll put that. <laughs> that kind of looks odd. What if we let this one just live off the canvas? Is that okay? Use the whole brush. We'll just something like that. There we go. That one got kind of fat at the bottom. Starting to come together. Again, longer video, but. I'm rusty. Just have to get over it. You always skip ahead, like I said. I had this one right there, but I'm actually going to bring it a little, a little taller. I'm going to bring it to the foreground. Or the midground here, I guess. And we'll highlight this one. It'll actually help push those trees that are behind it back. I kind of like it. I kind of like that one. And this is why I put these over here. I don't know how many evergreens I want here. I'm going to leave that one. I got lucky on that one. It looks pretty good. Don't let all your trees land at the same spot. That won't look well. Like your trees all had to grow right there because something was wrong with the land. It couldn't go down any further. Too much pollution. I don't know. It's late. It's after midnight here, guys. We're going to let it all hang out. Not literally. Like that, and we'll put some trunks. I really like that grass. That almost pretty good. 
And I'm going to put one between these guys right here. A touch taller. Actually, watch this. We'll, we'll kind of we'll pull a little speaky on you here. If we can't even see the top of that tree, it's so tall. It'll help us fill this side of the canvas in a little bit too. Doesn't have to be super filled in or anything, but it'll kind of close everything in and push our eye towards the center. I'm trying to save that little guy right there. There we go. Just smack it in some shapes here and we'll highlight all this. Bring it out a little better. There we go. Smacking some stuff on there. Where are we at? We're probably past an hour. Hour and one minute. Dang. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need one more. One more of these. I always do seven of them on a canvas this size. Can hold seven of these evergreens. Where should where should it live? Where should it live? This one could be a little darker too. Really darker in the corner. I should probably do some lines. You guys could help me out. I'm not real good at this. I want one more tree. I don't want it as tall as that one. Where does it live though? Put it right there. It lives right there now. I don't know if that's where it should live, but that's where it lives. We'll keep it. This one's, this one's gonna be sparse. Look at that. What I was saying about keeping your tree kind of skinny, or this big brush using it. You know, I don't like the filbert for trees anymore. But if you just drive this a little slower and be a little more deliberate about it, you can really get skinny trees with this fan brush too. This is a new one, so it's not been broken in at all. Still really fat. Still a fat fat. Yeah, it'll hang the noir a little bit. Who knows? We got a highlight on it. We might change it. Only highlight it. There we go. All right. What else can we do here before we start the hunt and the trees and all that jazz? I know we gotta put some grass right there. Gotta put something. I've got an idea. It'll look on until we until we fix it. Just some dark, mainly mountain mix. You could use brown here. I'm gonna put some rocks in this painting because I think they look nice. We'll go ahead and lay them out here. And smear on some dark. So hot here right now where we live. Not as bad as some folks had it during all the heat waves and stuff. Really weird weather. Different places out, out west. But like 92 degrees with you know 
92% humidity, something like that. People would joke, you know, it might be 115 in Arizona, but have you ever experienced 86 and 92% humidity in, uh, in the South? Like here in Tennessee, you don't know there's a difference. There is a there is a difference between dry heat and a wet heat. Which in Florida places. Just putting in some dark here. We'll kind of change it as we need to. That'll just look be a foundation for some rocks. Probably want some rocks back here. I think I do. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise this rock up uh, under that tree. Change that tree a little bit in a minute. But we do want some stuff back here. We gotta put a water line too. Where we think there might be a little little dirt showing. Rocky shore. Go up into the grass sometimes is nice, or it can stay right down here at the bottom. Whatever we want to do with it. It's going to look odd until we do something with it. Alright, so we got our dark in. I've got, I mixed up a little bit of brown, and ooh, there's glare on that knife. Sorry, I hope it's not getting you guys in the eyes. A little brown, uh, Van Dyke brown. A little dark sienna and a little white marble together. We just want to run a little bit back in here. Pretty much all of this kind of just pulls into the into the lake. It's right. And we could almost use this as our as our water line. Just kind of kick back up into it anyway. Maybe there's a little bit right there. Kind of pulling that knife. See if your paint's good. Mine is. It will work pretty good. A bit more right here. A little, a little bigger rock there. A little brighter. And I would encourage you to use that dark sienna. Don't just use Van Dyke Brown. Bob usually did, and it, it makes a difference in your rock color. When you're doing this method, your rocks need need that. They need that because it kind of looks odd just being brown. Get white and the, the sienna working together with the Van Dyke and it actually starts looking like some we can actually do a couple things with this color rocks up in the grass and we'll, we'll put a little grass around all that what if we just went ahead and maybe start thinking about rocks over here too just some rocky rocky areas Remember, marble your paint. Don't mix it to death. You may want to not do like me though and leave white showing through there. That's probably not real wise. Back in some brown there. There we go. Actually looking really nice. I like those colors. I really, really do. But I'm out of white, so I gotta grab a little white. Grab a little white. There. That's gonna be nice. Oh, I think it's gonna be nice. Another rock back in here. I should be a little darker, but 
Yeah, who knows? Sometimes we just go with it. You worry about that. If you worry about painting for realism, you need to take a little longer than an hour, hour and a half for a painting. <laughs> and I'd encourage you to check out people like Titchler on, on here on YouTube and um, Chuck Black. But I like painting like Bob. Not to say I don't, wouldn't mind to paint like those guys. It just takes a lot longer. I think I am a lazy painter like Bob said he was. There we go. We're going to put some grass in there and make it look pretty nice. Right? outcropping there maybe you can move that knife all different ways get rid of that right there I'm trying to cover up some of that bottom of that canvas where I still see the white that doesn't look too bad but while we got that color and we're working with the white and, the, and all that we can do this this will actually look really good on these trees, I think. Shoot, you can have Trump go all the way down on some of these. Oh, you have a steadier hand than me. That kind of little broken teeth there sticking out of it. Just do a trunk all the way down on this one. My hand's a little shaky tonight. We'll try it. Maybe skip there. Yeah. Remember, we're going to hide most of that anyway, probably with highlights. We're getting close here. I know I probably don't need to apologize, especially since it's my video. I don't mean to take so long sometimes. But I am having fun. There. Maybe a little bit back here. A little bit on this guy. Maybe just a touch. I think I may wipe my knife off, actually. And if I can. Run some little tops off of these. Right through the middle. Pointy them up a little bit. I'm really shaky. There we go. And there we go. And another thing you can do is if you want, you can even take the knife and kind of run through some of these or just in the paint just run some little, little stuff up like that doesn't really matter as long as like I said as long as you have fun Lord, we're getting close guys it's starting to look good too look good to me it might not look good to you I'll just stick with the old dirty fan brush here and I'm going to wipe it out just with a paper towel. If you don't need thinner all the time, don't use it. It's not good for you. Now, if you're careful with it, I do believe it's, it's fine to use it. Keep it covered when you're painting. Use it sparingly. And it'll work for you. Don't use it as a moisturizer. We'll get into some paint. We're going to highlight our trees next. And then we'll work on our grass or what else we might need. I want these to be kind of bluey green. Like a very, very faint highlight here. I want to put the green and the yellow, cad yellow here. I want to put a touch of Prussian blue in it. Yeah. Let's see if it, is, it might not be, might be too dark. It should show up okay. Let's see. Turn on this little guy back here. I 
Yes. They come off too too dark in it. Well not end up a touch. Of course that one's pretty far back there. It's it's fine if it doesn't have much. Kind of rule is that things get darker as they get closer to us, but how much on trees? Maybe fine. Yeah, I think his color's fine. It's just barely a highlight, which is probably pretty good. I always tell people in classes and things are used to. Um, if you think about a tree, you painted 100% of it with the dark. What you don't want to do is paint 100% with the highlight. So it's probably somewhere in like, you know, 50% or sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And I am not one that should probably try to use math to give you that idea of how to highlight. And sometimes, if you just even let the highlight live right on top, which is what I do, but you can let it just kind of get loose with it, and maybe there are pieces of highlight that don't even have dark on them. It looks nice, especially as you get closer to these bigger trees. Like there. Look at that. And the thinking is that most of your highlights need to live on one side of the tree. If you do that, you're going to look like you, it's going to look super odd. Your brightest highlights should probably be on the right side. I think your brightest spot's right there, so we can tell it's right here somewhere. Or somewhere over here because it's hitting the mountain a little bit. So it's probably on the right. But you need to cross over every now and then or it's going to look, it's just going to look weird. And what I've got to look for here change that color. I'm going to make sure this color is different enough from the grass that this little guy will stand out a little bit. I think it's fine if the bottom doesn't really stand out too much. There we go. There's enough highlight on there. I think that'll work okay. Alright. Good job. Good job. Over here this one. Rusty guys, I am going to try, start trying to do more of these again. Like I said, probably towards the fall time, end of August. Try to do a couple here this week, maybe. This will be one of them. Maybe do a shorter video on a couple of little ideas I had. And uh, get back to it a little more regularly. We try to hit one a month. I'm oh, shoot, sorry, one a week. Because I enjoy it. It makes me sit here and talk to myself. I don't know if that's good or not, but. I'm oh, too eager there. A little piece of brown from the trunk into the sky almost. This one, just a little bit here. It's not. Always go over your trunk a little bit. It's just pulling a little bit of that brown out. Color must not be thin enough. Thin enough to sit on the tree, but not to go over the, the trunk. The rock. Big old tree there. Now let's go do some fun stuff here. Just looking, we're in an hour and 20 minutes. Goodness. All right, I'm gonna grab just a touch of liquid white and again, just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm out of yellow ochre, so we'll try to make this work here. I want a little grass growing in between my rocks. Maybe a touch of 
ending all every so often might not be bad. Might not be a bad idea. Now the original painting that Nick had had fireweed all in it. And it was lovely. We're going to have fireweed too here in a minute. After I get my grass kind of settled in here. See that kind of just growing between the rocks? It, it, don't kill all the dark of the rocks, but kill a little bit of it. Kill seems a little harsh, but you probably do. Let's brighten this side up because it might be getting more light. Yeah. Oh, we got to go back and bit back in there don't you? you never want to leave your rocks just sitting there always put them back in the ground a little bit kind of like that find an edge go over it with grass or something and walk it back you also have to put a water line goodness forgetful may not be the best person to watch to uh, learn how to paint exactly like Bob but you know, a little bit of that grass going in there. There we go. We'll make it work here. Let's do the water on before I forget. I kind of like the lake. Kind of light. Kind of green. If you've ever looked at lake water, that's the one thing. If I got on, if I had to. Talk to Bob. If I could talk to him, I would ask him why is the lake for usually really, really light blue. Most of our lakes around here don't look blue. They look dirty. A little bit of water here. A little water on that. She used a dirty color for that even. Maybe too dirty. I'm sawing that in here, setting it back in here. Maybe it wraps around a little bit there. Yeah. When I talked to folks about Bob and, and and you know why Bob did stuff, I was like, Bob had 27 minutes, folks, to do a TV show. That's in a canvas that was. You know, larger than this one. What am I on? An hour and 20 minutes for this one? Bob would have had three done. So. You can't say anything negative about the man. It went a little bit lighter with the white. Oh, thank you guys. Let me show another thing I've been doing a lot. When I paint. I'll put my water line in like normal, but sometimes I've been taking a little bit, almost like doing a little tree bark, I'm just touching a little water line in here. This may be easier if you're struggling with water lines. It stands out a little, a little bit nicer. Maybe you'll see it a little bit better right here. See that? Just kind of loosely touch it in there. I think it looks a little nicer. I could be wrong. Uh, rules still apply here. You've got to, you got to keep your water running. Running here, running right across the canvas. There we go. Let's see where we're at. We're going to make it in. A, we might make it an hour and thirty minutes. Ninety minutes, not bad. Have to get like a after school special here. Not PBS, we have to have like a whole two hours with commercials and things. Alright. What am I missing? I think we'll try some little stick trees next and see what we see where we get. I'm just gonna use the Van Dyke Browns, pretty much straight, and may throw a little touch of 
the dark sand in there. And there's always, if you look at these paintings or the pictures, there's always some little dead trees living around. I want to put some in here too. Maybe just kind of paint something in there. Maybe just throw some little things kind of coming off of them. That one's not looking good. I gotta touch that one back up. We'll go to a different one here. There. That one works. little sticks off of it little branches this one gave up the ghost a long time ago yeah they don't all have to be little little stick trees either I mean little dead whatever they could be little stick trees maybe be a little something like that Oh, I always do this anymore. Go through and draw some of these little guys out. On your bigger trees, it actually looks really nice. Keep them kind of skinny. But it's not just, they're not just needles hanging there. They're, they're actually on branches. So. And I think these may be spruce trees. Somebody told me one day. They almost sometimes look like cedar trees that I've got in my yard. If you're an arborist and you're watching this for some reason, tell me what these might be. We'll just call them Bob Ross trees for now. And that will usually be fine, right? Be real loose with this. Just get in there and just pull some of them out. Can't mess up. I mean, really, look how it's moving the brush around, really. They're hanging out all over the place. You might get a little crazy here. But it does add something. I know one here. I can already tell you that. It's just going to be like a. One that kind of goes all the way up like that. Maybe it's a little taller. Something like that. There we go. I think this one is again not not one of these in the background that have died. It's it's a it's a stick tree that's I don't know. Maybe this they just not got their leaves yet. I don't know. Kind of agree with Bob. You have to have little dead trees, you know, to remind us that things are not permanent. This tree's just taking a little nap there. Could even throw in a little darker color here. Maybe throw one around here. Doesn't have to be as big. Maybe it's just kind of reaching out there. Even a little dead tree needs a friend. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Always kind of set your your trees back into whatever you paint them on. Just in the grass or rocks, whatever. Maybe just mix the two colors up. Turns into like a gray. I don't want to keep putting them. I gotta fix this one. This one looks awful. So let's fix it. There we go.
think that's it. No, fireweed. Shoot. A little fireweed first. This is Alaska, baby. It'll be fireweed everywhere. We're just gonna do, we're just gonna use a little one inch brush here. I'm not gonna get out a fancy brush or anything. So you're gonna take just a touch, a very small amount of uh, alizarin crimson. Right, let me get me. That'll work. Just a little crimson and white. You want to make a pinkish color. Don't need to be too pink. You don't want it real dark either. Look up fireweed if you decide to put this in here. It will help you kind of know what you're looking for. I think I can do it with this one inch brush. Let's try it. Yep. There. And again, it's not going to be exactly like fireweed. Fireweed kind of grows straight up on little stalks and things. This is just a little indication of some growing back there in the wild, maybe. And I'm just going to touch it on a few little spots here. You can even. Put a little a hint of pink color in there. Let's get a little bit back here now. There, something like that. Just a little. It's actually nice. Adds a little something to the painting, doesn't it? Little clumps of it. Maybe you can hide some little foots of the trees with it. And I did put just a drop of liquid white in here. Very little. Maybe right there it needs a little clump. That area is looking kind of odd to me. That may be crazy. If you get your paint then down just right, you don't have to push hard at all. Barely touch, and it'll come off for you. You can do it. I know you can. I know you can. Let me brighten that one up a little bit. We'll just brighten that one up just to distinguish it. I could have brightened the top one up. Probably made more sense, but that don't always make sense. You've been listening to me for a while now. You probably know that there. Just a little something there. There. I don't know exactly where fireweed would grow. I mean, I kind of do, but I don't know if they grow right down to the water. kind of like that and you, you really want to keep for the most part you want to keep that kind of centered um, you don't want a fireweed right here it's gonna draw your eye over there so you want to kind of keep it in this this area best you can would mind to have a little more if you needed to what you could do and I've got a I've got that filbert brush here okay so yeah let's see what See if I can get a cover here. I've done it this way before too. Tap on a little dark, a few spots. Just kind of like this. Okay. And then you can take. You gotta have some dark for one more fight. Take your little brush and just kind of cover it there. Like that. And I think, guys, I am going to sign her. Sign that one up. Sign it up. We can put all kinds of other stuff in here, but I think we'll call, call it done. And I may just sign with pink. Right here. Put 
put the signature in a little different spot here. There it is. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around so long if you did, or even if you skipped to the end here. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'd probably do the same thing. Let me get you a little centered view here. There she is. Not bad. Not a bad little painting. Not bad at all. I may tinker with a couple of things on it, but pretty much it's done. You can always put a big stick tree, um, some kind of big tree there on the, the left, maybe swooping in instead of those evergreens. But it looks pretty good. So we'll call it done. This is the longest video I've made in a long time. Don't know why it's so long. But I hope you enjoyed it. Whether you skipped through it, whether you watched the whole thing, I just hope you liked it. And I really hope you get on here more often and get back to doing these little videos because I enjoy it. I get to talk to myself and it's not weird when you talk to yourself and you're recording it. So I talk to myself all the time. Everybody take care, stay well, be well, uh, and be kind to others. And I will see you in a few days, if not next week. Okay? Take care, my friends.